from the Zero Prostate Cancer, we have Mr. Paul Kennedy, our super dear friend and our super new friend, Sean Supers, uh, coming in from wherever they are in the world. Here we Wait, go. Paul's a deer? There he we looks go. like a man. Oh, hey. What's going yeah, I wouldn't, on? I wouldn't count on this being the most professional interview. Oh, it's going to be. <laughs> I know. I feel a lot of pressure here, Paul. Yeah, I know. Well, you know, we, we talked we talk to y'all before the show, and this yeah. just seemed, you know, we're going to kind of joke around about it, but at the end of the day, this is super serious, and, you know, it is. we it don't is. generally talk about super serious things on the show, but this is definitely one of those, so let's just get into this thing. Yeah, Andrew Hatton says zero pressure. Look at that. Zero Play pressure words. Andrew Hatton. So, uh... Sean, tell, tell everybody who you are and, and what, what you're doing here. Just a little background. Yeah, awesome. Well, I'm Sean Supers with Zero Prostate Cancer. We are a nationwide nonprofit organization that seeks to zero out prostate cancer in a nutshell. And uh, I'm here with uh, one of our volunteer leaders, Paul Kennedy, who is a beard and mustache competitor himself. When did that and happen? And also happens to be a <laughs> prostate cancer survivor. And we're here to uh, chat with you guys about the importance of getting screened and early detection. Talk a little bit about what Zero does to help out patients and to, and to change and make a change for the better. And, uh, and most importantly, we're going to talk to you all about the Blue Beard Challenge and the fun that you can get on in on with Paul and uh, Anna Samish and um, help us out with this uh, really important cause so we can save some lives. Yeah. That's so it. as, as I kind of brought up real quick before we brought you guys in, I recently just went through some blood work and not even thinking that that was something that I should ask for. Like you said, Sean, let's like, it's something you may need to have to ask your doctor to do. And so Paul bringing it to you, like mm -hmm. what led up to you? I mean, was it just a routine checkup that, that you were doing before you got diagnosed or was it, or were you having like issues? Like, let's talk a little bit about how you yes. discovered. Um, it was the spring of 21. I went in for my, you know, the annual physical where they do all the other blood work and things like that. And just, it had, just kind of been on my brain. I asked about a PSA test and, um, and this is one of the things we'll probably get into more uh, um, about. My doctor didn't want to do it. He said, you know, it's not recommended. They're, they're, they can't tell a whole lot of things from it, you know, or they're not as accurate as they would like them to be. And I, you know, because I have a, a family history of cancer and my age, you know, I'm in my fifties, I, I, I insisted on it basically and told him, let's go ahead and do it anyway. And that test came back high. So I was over the threshold. So then they, uh, they told me it was normal, nothing to worry about. Three months later, they retested me. It was higher. And then we did it another three months, and it was higher again then. Um, so at that point, I was referred to a urologist. Um, and he sent me in for an MRI, and that found a uh, lesion on the, on the prostate gland. Yeah. And it was kind of right on the edge, bulging out. So it was about to break loose. Um, so it's kind of angered me because, you know, I had to ask for this test. And if I hadn't asked for it, this could have been much, much worse. You know, if we hadn't, so, it could have been two or three years down the road and I could have been stage four, you know? So with that, so, you, you said it, it hadn't broke loose yet. What exactly does that mean? What does that mean? Yeah, well, like the, the, prostate gland is about, the prostate gland is about the size of a walnut. And the tumor was on the bottom edge of it, basically. And it was pushing out through the capsule of the, the prostate. So if it had broken out of that and spread to the tissue around there, then it's a lot much, it's a lot harder to treat. That's what I figured. So. Yeah. So that's called metastasized cancer. When yeah. it gets outside of the origin of the cancer and it starts to metastasize to other uh, bodily tissues and organs, most commonly with prostate cancer, the cancer is going to uh, metastasize to the bladder or to the bones uh, because of where the prostate can is located up yeah, inside the, of the body, the lymph nodes. up behind the bladder there. Yeah. Yeah. And into the lymph nodes too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you got 
blood work done. Mm -hmm. What about the traditional, as we were kind of talking to, like back in the day, they used to. They did. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. They did not do that with me. Uh, so through my but, whole diagnosis process, I never got the, the little finger test. <laughs> but question, though, if they would have done that, would they have detected it that six months earlier before you did all those? Probably. They, they, they most likely would have because, like I said, the, you know, the, the lesion was kind of bulging out of the prostate yeah. gland. So they would have been able to, to feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to punch someone after that? Cause it's oh, I was so weird. mad. I, I honestly, uh, I'm still with the same doctor's office, but I don't see that doctor anymore. I would. Uh, I can imagine. I just, not. I, just, I just don't, I just don't have the confidence in him. <laughs> yeah. So Sean, is that, is that anything that you've ever heard to be oh. somewhat normal that they didn't want to attest? Like that just, it just seems crazy. Oh, you know. guys, like, I got to take off my beard here so that I can. Yeah, talk let's, yeah, here, yeah, let's get, just take uh, ours off too. Break it out. Yeah, let's all do that. The top <laughs> here, and clearly Andrew uh, understands the importance of being an advocate for yourself and, and getting yourself checked. Thank you, Andrew. See? Um, listen, I can't tell you guys the number of heartbreaking stories that I hear all the time from doctors that fail to do a simple prostate-specific antigen blood test with men who are certainly of age to be tested, who then find out when their wife, like there's a story, you guys, real, real story of a patient. Wife and husband are joking around with each other and she kind of pushes them, right? She just pushes them in the shoulder. He breaks, he breaks a bone and they're like, what the hell that like that was just joshing around that wasn't like a big hard hit that shouldn't be breaking a bone only to find out that the gentleman has metastasized prostate cancer that's already reached his bones because his doctor wasn't doing his screenings your doctor is gonna do your blood draw for your physical should be getting your physical done every year they're gonna look for cholesterol and they're gonna look at sugar levels there is absolutely no reason why they should not also be looking at your prostate specific antigen levels or your PSA test. So is there a reason why that's not part of just their, their routine testing? Yeah. It's Unfortunately, the government it has to do with government recommendations <laughs> and the government does not recommend uh, prostate cancer screenings. We can't help but feel that there's a direct correlation between that government recommendation and the fact that, Prostate cancer is the only cancer in our country whose death rate continues to climb instead of decline. So basically what you're saying is the government's trying enough. to kill us off? Basically, yeah. <laughs> so it seems like. I, I mean, it seems that way <laughs> and on some level. And we do a lot of advocacy work at Zero, which you know is one of the four pillars of activity in the organization, um, where we work a lot with our government representatives to try to get them to change those recommendations. Um, you know, just the simple fact, we actually have uh, just presented here in the last uh, 24, 48 hours, um, a Senate bill that is being sponsored to waive prostate cancer screening co-pays for men who are at high risk. And men who are at high risk are men that have a family history of the disease, not just your dad and your grandpa, but your uncle, your cousins, like your cross branches of the family there. If anybody has prostate cancer, breast cancer, or ovarian cancer. Those are known as the hormonal cancers. They can commonly be genetically tied. If you happen to be a black man, you're at a higher risk for prostate cancer, and you're more than two times more likely to die from the disease. Why um, is that? That it has, you know, it, it's research is something that we're really trying to like problem solve. Like, why is it that black men are more likely? But the other side of it is um, education, talking about it from generation to generation within a family so that you understand what your risks are and then access to great health care, right? To good health care and to screenings. And so um, that's another pillar of activity that Zero does is our health equity work, trying to break down those barriers to care for folks that are in the, the black and brown community. Hmm. So, um, so also veterans are uh, uh, at a higher risk. Veterans that have been exposed to toxins like burn pits or that are pilots that are sitting right on top of explosives and engines and heat and toxins are getting trapped in their groin. That's making them more susceptible to prostate cancer. Also, our first responders, particularly firefighters, are at a higher risk for prostate cancer for similar reasons. Their gear traps toxins and heat in the groin area, which just makes them a little bit more susceptible. 
those scenarios, our first responders, our veterans, um, men of all kinds, it breaks my heart that we are losing them at the rate that we are. But uh, especially those American heroes really gets underneath my skin that, that here these guys are trying to protect us and, and care for us. And, and they're uh, putting their lives at risk in the process. So least we can do is help them get uh, better gear, better care, and uh, get to the prostate cancer diagnosis earlier. Because if prostate cancer is caught early, like in Paul's case, um, it was caught in, it sounds like maybe in its second stage, Paul. Yeah, it was stage uh, 2C is what they call it. Yeah, yeah, 2C. Um, it's, you know, it's nearly 100% treatable when it's caught before it metastasizes. It's after it metastasizes that it becomes a problem. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, so I did, as I was doing some research for the show, I also went to the zerocancer.org, as you can all see on the bottom of the screen there. So if you want to go get some information, it's a great website, lots of really good information on there, uh, especially if you've recently discovered or were diagnosed that you do have something. There is a lot of things on the website that I guess help people plan out their, like uh, what's going to happen with them or so tell us a little bit about that, Sean, like about what, what, what they should prepare for if they do discover like, and even Paul too, like, mm -hmm. you know, you, you, you find out you have something going on, then what, what's the, what happens? Like, oh. well, Paul, tell them your story. Well, it, yeah. there's, there, there's yeah. several, different, you know, I just want to jump back to a comment Jason made here. Earlier. Yeah, man, there's, there's a, a bunch of good comments in here. We'll yeah, he said he, was, he had a high PSA test, but it was just an infection. A high right. PSA does not necessarily mean cancer. Right. It could be other things. It could be, you know, an enlarged prostate. It could be infection or prostatitis or things like that. It's basically a, a check engine light, which mm -hmm. means further diagnostics, diagnosis is needed. In my case, they uh, sent me for an MRI and the MRI found us, you know, that lesion that I talked about. And then after that, I went in for the biopsy and it found cancer in about two thirds of the gland. Like the, actually the more aggressive cancer didn't even show up on the MRI. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, you know, there's several things that they have to do to make sure, you know, they're getting everything. And then they yeah. followed that with a PET scan to make sure that it hadn't spread anywhere else. I was just going to add, Paul, it, you know, it's like saying, does your cholesterol test d predict heart disease? Mm -hmm. No, but if you've got a cholesterol level that's really high and it stays high over time, it's an indicator right. that there's, yeah. you know, that there's trouble, right? So the PSA test, I think, is still really helpful. It's just not the end all be all. I got, I got right. one thing to throw in here. I'm just seeing if this, there's any, it says prevention ditch dairy. Is there, is there a link between dairy and prostate cancer? that you are aware of? Not that I'm aware of. I'm not a medical professional. Um, <laughs> I know that there are many patients who look to their diet and lifestyle uh, to, uh, to help their body along uh, with, with cancer treatments. And so um, we certainly encourage folks to, you know, to pay attention to that and to learn about it, find out what works for them. Um, but everybody needs something a little bit different. Yeah. Yeah. As and, you, it, you know, and it's not, it doesn't hit like just, you know, people that are in poor health. Yeah, I've, you know, I'm in a couple of different support groups, and there are guys that are like, you know, marathon runners that mm -hmm. are, you know, being diagnosed with it. And I'm starting to see a lot more younger guys, like, you know, 42, 43. <sighs> you know? Not that there's any good age to be diagnosed with prostate cancer, but I, uh, you know, I spend uh, my, my, my days, my weeks, my months for seven years, I've been with this organization and um, absolutely it seems that the cases get younger and younger. Um, yeah. I've heard just, you know, just today about a gentleman, 42 years old. Last week, I was watching a video uh, from our Twin Cities run walk of a gentleman also diagnosed at 42 years old, standing there with his two boys that he is the, uh, the coach of their hockey teams. And they couldn't have been seven, eight, nine years old, something like that, you know, men that are in the prime of their lives. So um, really, really important. And, his, his cancer um, already metastasized, but was detected uh, because his wife made him an appointment to go get his annual physical. And on the way to the physical, she called him and said, while you're there, get a PSA test done. Yeah. Doctor, the doctor told him, that his, he, he shares this whole thing in this video. And he says, I go and the doctor says, well, I'm not so happy with your cholesterol. I want to look at, I want you to get this test on your insurance company won't cover it. 
that test costs a hundred bucks to get, but I think it would be really wise for your heart health for us to look at it. And the guy says, well, sure, you know, go ahead and do that. And then it gets down to the PSA test. He says, my wife wants me to get the PSA test. And the doctor says, no, 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 you don't need it. Uh, you're, you're far too young for that. You, you really don't need it. At 42, right? And again, the doctor's following government recommendations here. So um, uh, he said, yeah, listen, I, I'm not going back and telling my wife that I didn't get this test done. I'm, right. I'm, I'm going to get it. told me to do it. I'm going to do right. this test. So. Right. And this is this, and I want to be happy. So, so here it is. And then he said, well, the doc says, well, the insurance company might not cover it. Yeah. He said, so how much is that test? 20 bucks. Yeah, that's it's twenty bucks. <laughs> it's a no brainer, right? It's a no brainer. And thank wow. God, and thank God that he that his wife did all of that and that he insisted because uh, you know, a few months later and it could have been a, a very different situation. Right. Family, Super right? lucky yeah. for his wife. Yeah, yeah. And the, the lower grade cancers are so much easier to treat, you know, than the, the more aggressive ones. Once it gets out of the prostate, it's really hard to treat. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the the uh treatments are kind of brutal almost. Yeah. Thankfully, though, really research, you know, like I said, I've been with the organization on the cause for seven years. And when I first started, there were really only a couple of treatment options. You got a prostatectomy and you got put on androgen, andro what's called androgen deprivation therapy. Um, and there were very limited uh, treatment pa pathways for patients, even just seven years ago, 10 years ago, uh, even less options. And uh, I'm really happy to say that there have been some major advancements in research and, and treatment pathways. And I think, gosh, we're, we're now up to uh, six or seven new treatment pathways that have been established mm -hmm. uh, in the seven years that I've been with the cause and the organization. And, um, you know, Zero, yeah. I, I mentioned we do advocacy work and um, uh, that's what, what we do there is we're asking the government to invest in prostate cancer research funding as one of our asks. Mm -hmm. And um, when I first started, they were investing $80 million in uh, research funding. And now we're up to 110 and awesome. frankly hoping to get to 120 million. Um, you know, of course, over time, that money with inflation, it's buying less and less research. So we need them to keep upping their investment in, uh, in researching this disease until they, uh, so we find the cure that we're looking for, frankly. Yeah. And as you were saying, there are multiple uh, treatment methods. You know, there's, there's the prostatectomy, which is actually removal of the prostate gland. Then there's multiple radi different types of radiation. There's photon, proton, um, what stereotactic, which is what I did. Um, yeah. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Paul? Yeah. yeah. Walk us um, through that. But they also have ultrasound and cryotherapy too. Those are more for like very small lesions. Mm -hmm. What I went through was called, it's called stereotactic body radiation therapies, SBRT, is the nickname for it. And I've seen it in other places, they call it cyber knife or um, cyber surgery. But what it is, is it's, it's a high dose radiation. And it's, um, it's only five treatments. It took two and a half weeks to do. It was like two a week and uh, one on the third week. Um, and the machine is, it's just, just this enormous machine. And what they do is they, they, they focus the beam where it's supposed to hit. And then the machine kind of rotates around you so that you don't have like one specific point of entry for the radiation. So that way it hits everything. Okay. And you also don't have like the skin burns and things like that, that the other radiation forms can give you. So it was, it was kind of fascinating to watch, but terrifying at the same time. Was there, was it painful or painless? You don't feel a thing from the radiation uh, itself. What you wow. do is you have the side effects afterwards. Um, Fatigue was hell. There's a lot, yeah. a lot of fatigue. Um, everything in there swells up. So like peeing is hard after the radiation. That took about a month before that kind of leveled off. Um, you know, and with some of the other, you know, with a lot of the, pro the treatment methods, like ED is a problem that happens with a lot of them. Uh, it's more so with surgery. Um, surgery can also cause incontinence. Uh, so with the radiation, you don't have so much of that. The ED issues with surgery or radiation usually come a couple of years down the road, like afterwards. Mm -hmm. It was the, everything kind of dies off basically. Yeah. Did you have any issues with hair loss through this? I did not. I did not. Um, Cause I, you know, I didn't have to, I didn't have to do the, uh, what you call the androgen deprivation, which is basically they suppress your t testosterone. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And I didn't have to do that. They did a genetic test on me to see like what my risk of reoccurrence would be. And I came in on the low scale of that. So they, you know, the ADT wasn't recommended then. 
So I did luck out on that one. And that, right. that would have caused the hair loss. That would have, you know, you lose yeah. body hair, you lose facial hair. That's terrific, Paul. I didn't know that you had been, that you'd use some of those diagnostic tests that have really helped, like really helped doctors. Yeah, it's called, it's, it's called decipher. It is the best treatment pathway. <laughs> and, um, I'll just put a plug in here for anybody who, you know, who's, you know, listening to this and hearing what, what does this mean? And what are these different tests and what are my treatment options? If you just visit our website, zerocancer.org, you can take the am I at risk quiz you can find a newly diagnosed guide there that you can download. You can find questions to ask your doctor. Um, and, uh, and you can also find out about our support services, Zero. Um, we pride ourselves on offering uh, free patient support services, um, whether that's financial assistance, help with insurance claims, help with making treatment decisions. We have support groups, we have mentors. Um, uh, and so there's, you know, talking about this, the, the, the disease is very different for every different man. Uh, there are different levels of risk, uh, but I do want to just point everybody to a real, that, that website is really comprehensive and helping you uh, get a better understanding of what, you know, what prostate cancer is, what your risks are, and then what program Zero offers to, uh, to provide support and help you navigate all of the ins and outs of that kind of a thing, especially a diagnosis. Hey, Aaron, let's do this real quick. Are let's you over or under 50? I'm under. Did your brother, father, or grandfather diagnose this disease? No. Are you a veteran? No. Whoops. White, Caucasian, well, do you consume a high-fat diet? I don't think so. We'll put unsure. Okay. Oh, now we need to fill this. This is a little bit more than. <laughs> I thought it was going to be yes or no. Your email address, right? Instantaneous <laughs> results. It was like a BuzzFeed quiz, but it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> we were foiled. Oh, there. well, we, we would have been a little bit more prepared on that. But <laughs> but yeah, so, okay. Now, now taking another little step back here, though. But Paul, how on earth did you get like hooked up with Zero? Like, how did all that? fall into place. So you, I mean, was that something that happened early on or after you were done with your treatments? It just kind of, I mean, how did you guys meet? That's a good, well, question. when they, when I, they first told me I had prostate cancer, I went through, I, you know, Dr. Google, you know, I, mm -hmm. I, I went through every site I could possibly find on prostate cancer. I'm like, what treatments were available? What's going to work the best? What are my, you know, better options for outcomes and without issues and things like that. And that's how I found the zero site. Okay. And then, um, you know, just because of you know the way my diagnosis went, I almost felt an obligation to warn other people, you know, that this could happen to you. So I started putting stuff out on TikTok and on Instagram, and then I started tagging them on it, and then we kind of started interacting back and forth, and that's how we finally, you know, got connected. Power of social media, Paul Kennedy. Yeah. Yep. Well, he did some really. Um some really eye catching uh, pieces there. He shaped his beard into a blue ribbon for prostate cancer awareness month. September is prostate cancer awareness month. And, um, and so uh, he, he really stood out to us on TikTok, and uh, we thought it was an excellent way of taking his personal passion for beards and combining it with his, there you go his uh his purpose which nice. is getting this important message out to his uh fellow cohorts in the community about the importance of uh getting screened and and early detection there right um yeah and and this is why paul is what we call a zero prostate cancer champion you can see there on his hat that he's got <laughs> identified these are volunteer leaders in the community that share their stories that uh go above and beyond for the cause and and help us um with with um, you know, fueling our program so that we can keep all of this uh, effort going, and um, uh, we're actually really excited. Paul is is brewing up something fun for the beard and mustache uh, community. Do you want to let everybody know what we're, what we, what you're up to, Paul? Yeah, you want to jump into that now? Let's. Yeah. Do, we okay. love jumping. We've got the Blue Beard Challenge Beard and Mustache Competition, and it's going to run basically like all the other online competitions. We're going to have a you know we have the event page out there on Facebook. And it's going to be a submissions of video and photos, you know, like the, the traditional um, traditional online competitions. <laughs> um, and we're going to open it up and just have it set up for the month of November. So that's, you know, 
was it was full month of November, right, Sean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. for, you know, we know, you know, you guys every day is no shave November right. for you, but um, right. uh, Zero's version of uh, no shave November is essentially what we we call it the grow and give to zero out prostate cancer campaign. Um, it runs in November. We've got community groups and corporations and individuals who all come together and get involved in this. And so Paul has formed the Bluebeard Challenge team and is inviting everybody to uh, submit entries. And there's a, a request of a $25 donation per entry per category uh, to help support the cause that money goes to Fueling Zero's program. So I talk about the four pillars that we do at Zero Education and Awareness. Number one, that's what we're doing here on Talking Beards, right? Yep. Uh, we're making sure the community knows about that importance of early detection. Uh, we do that advocacy work that we talked about, trying to turn the tides. It just gets my goose that women go and get a mammogram every year and don't have to pay a dime. And our men don't have the same with prostate cancer screenings. And really, they should. Um, how not even told to get them. Yeah, health equity is important. <laughs> um, and then our fourth category are those patient support programs. Like I said, we have a, a program where men can turn for financial assistance, help with navigating insurance claims. A lot of times men need mental and emotional support. You know, they're trying to be strong for their families at the same time that they're trying to fight the cancer. And uh, there's this whole mental and emotional roller coaster that comes along with that. Um, Paul, oh, I'm sure me. you know firsthand <laughs> about that. But, you know, what, what was that experience like for you? Mm -hmm. It, is, it Our, is very emotional. When, you, when you're, you're immediately told cancer, you're you're almost viewing the end of your life. You know, it's, it's everything just flashes through your brain of, you know, what am I going to do? How is this going to affect me? Um, how is this going to affect the people around me? You know, um, it's scary as hell. It really is scary as hell. I can only imagine how super scary uh, I, that whole A lot of tears, was. a lot of screaming. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, ended up in therapy for a little while. Yeah, yeah. Is that, is that pretty common? Yeah. The, yeah. The and, um, you know, sadly, it can lead to thoughts of suicide. Um, and so it's really important that we are providing uh, mental and emotional support to, to the uh, patients that we serve and to their caregivers. Right. Like this is something that I, uh, I like to talk about. Zero has and you can find on our website. Um, there's a search function there to see the we have support groups that meet in person and virtually. We have support groups just for caregivers. Because listen, caregivers are trying to be strong for their partners, and their spouses, and at the same time that they're also trying to, you know, go through their own mental and emotional battle about the what ifs uh, surrounding a cancer diagnosis. And so um, making sure that, that, uh, that folks know that there's that kind of level of support for them is really important. We also have a mentor program. I had a gentleman who told me years ago, I just get a kick out of this because this is probably how I would be um, if I were in, in y'all's shoes. Um, he said, listen, Sean, I don't want to get all kumbaya with a group of people that I don't know about my business below my belt, right? <laughs> and, and I thought... Fair, right? That's yeah. sometimes the group setting is appropriate at different stages of your prostate cancer journey. Um, and sometimes you just need another man who's gone through it themselves to just talk with one on one, talk it over, like maybe that. So we have a mentor program where we partner patients who are survivors up with men. We try to match up their cases and similarity or their geography. And we really just let them support each other however is best. Like, what does the patient need? They talk to their mentor. The mentor might provide uh, some like lifestyle tips or some webinars or some educational information, but mostly just there to like talk to another man and be there for them and hold space for them. Um, make sure that they're getting well taken mm -hmm. care of mentally and emotionally, right? Um, and mm -hmm. so uh, I think that's really critical. And, and again, the caregivers making sure that they have the support because those caregivers are going through that battle, um, if not physically, definitely uh, mentally and emotionally as well. It, it seems like we're really kind of getting a good message out here. We get a lot of comments from a lot of yeah. people. I mean, even for myself, like I, I know I need to get blood work done in a couple of months and I'm definitely going to ask for that. But like even Kyle says, he's like, what great vital information. He has an upcoming blood test and he's going to be checked. And great. Right. Mike's One like 50 this year. He's uh, so doctor suggested testing for prostate 
prostate and it was a uh, scared just to get tested. He didn't know much about it. So, I mean, that's what, what, what we're doing tonight is bringing mm-hmm. awareness to it. So and one I really up. wanted to, I, it was earlier. I wanted to get back to it. I just wanted to say that about Eric Barger here. He said he went, he went yesterday to urologist and all of his levels were very high said my prostate is huge waiting on more blood work to come back and i do have cancer in my family any advice so that's a that's a pretty heavy one paul do you have advice i i can um, certainly chime in but i want i want to hear from you first well first don't panic like i said you know just because the psa is high does not necessarily mean anything or it may mean something but it doesn't it's not definite right that, that's the case um the usual diagnosis process, like I talked about after the, the, the higher levels of PSA is uh, an MRI. So that would be the next step probably most likely for him. And then the biopsy follows that. And a lot of doctors do what they call as a blind biopsy where they just go in and start puncturing holes, you know, and taking samples to see. But they, the one I did was called a fusion biopsy where they use the MRI image and an ultrasound to find where they're going to test for the cancer. Hmm. So they, you know, targeted the lesion that was detected and then also went around the rest of the prostate gland to, to get the okay. other samples. They pulled 14 samples out of me. Hmm. And um, how was that, it, Paul? Brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, I, it depends on where you are and who's doing it for you. A lot of places may put you under for it. I was not. Hmm. Um, they said it was a local anesthetic that they used, you know, lidocaine. They said, oh, you'll feel a little thump. Well, lidocaine does absolutely nothing for me. So I got harpooned 14 times. <laughs> I felt everything. Oof. And um, I almost passed out, actually. <laughs> Gosh. Blood pressure dropped. Nails. And, Paul Kennedy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boy. It was, it, was, it was not fun at all. But I don't want that to scare people. You know, you, Eric it's Barker, over and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's half an hour and you're done. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I agree with what Paul said. Like, first of all, please visit our website, zerocancer.org, and just educate yourself. Education is empowerment. And that I think is is the first line of defense against like, don't jump to conclusions, don't panic, try not to project as best as you can, do all of your oming and your meditating and your breathing and stay like, you know, stay right here. Try not to Try not to, you know, get outside of that um, just to control your levels of anxiety. Reach out to us, you know, visit the website. Like I said, there's documents there with questions to ask your doctor. If you are diagnosed, there's a lovely guide there. Give us like a glossary of terminology. What are all these tests that I'm hearing about and what do they mean and what do they do? And what's the difference between a urologist, an oncologist and a radiologist? Do you know? They're all spelled different. When you hear the words, I've got cancer, or you've got cancer, when you hear those words, like you kind of, what I hear from folks is like, it's like white noise. Like you kind of, you're in the moment and you don't really hear everything that your doctor's telling you from that point on. You need to go back and like educate yourself and and just knowing the difference between those three medical providers can help Mm. unravel a lot of the mystery for you. So please turn to Zero for, uh, for resources and help and information. Um, We do uh, on our website there, right at the top of our website, You'll see that there's a helpline, a toll-free helpline that you can reach out to if you've got uh, some deeper questions. Uh, we'll be happy to help you. Also, if you know, it does turn out to be something, research all your options for treatment too, because there's so many out there and there's so many different ways it can be done. A surgeon is going to tell you surgery is the best way. A radiation oncologist is going to tell you that radiation is the best way. So get yeah. different opinions and then figure out where you're going. I went with radiation because of where the the, the, the tumor that they found was right near the bladder sphincter. Mm-hmm. Okay. So if they had done surgery, there was a high risk that I could have been incontinent afterwards. Mm-hmm. So that was one fear. Um, the other fact was um, that I, because it was bulging out of the prostate, they said I may need follow-up radiation after the surgery in case it has spread. And I'm like, you know, if I'm going to do that, let's just do it once. Yeah. So that's why I went for the the higher dose radiation rather than, risking those other factors. Yeah. 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 There's nothing wrong with getting second or third opinions about, uh, you know, about your treatment pathways. And, and if you are going to one of those doctors who just really is like, no, you don't need this test. No, you don't need this screening. Go find another doctor. Right. Exactly. Like, uh, I, would never imagine that. I mean, again, I, I hear these uh, stories every week. It's, it's, yeah. My story's not unique. 
<laughs> no, that, that's just, just yeah. mind blowing. You know, it's like kind of a known thing. Once you're over 40, you should start thinking about getting your, your prostate checked and you know yeah. why it just, I don't know, just the doctor thing just completely blows. Well, my yeah. Mind. And a colonoscopy <laughs> too. I mean, right. Yeah. It's all, it's all kind of, you know, you, you need those things done. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. I'm loving these comments like Bruce City, uh, Bruce City Bearded. Thank you uh, for the shout out there uh, for the charity. And I saw some folks commenting that they're excited about the Bluebeard Challenge. Honestly, that is the best way if you guys want to get behind zero prostate cancer and Paul and uh, and help us with uh, fueling all of this work that we do for the cause and in the community. I would absolutely be thrilled to have you, uh, you know, form a, a grow and give team. If you want to do one on your own, you're welcome to visit zerocancer.org slash grow, uh, free to register. You can get yourself set up there. Or if you want to, uh, to participate in the Bluebeard challenge, uh, like Paul said, we'll have a um, uh, launch in there in November uh, through the whole month of November, taking entries for that. And that's a great way to support the cause and the mission. Um, if you're connected with, uh, uh, you know, any um, local entities like a brewery or or a bar or something like that, and you want to host like a an event that helps to raise awareness for the cause and uh, fuels our resources with donations, um, I'd be thrilled to chat with you. Um, definitely can use all the help we can get with getting this word out. Uh, you know, like I said four different pillars of activity. We're trying to tackle the disease from a lot of different angles, but we mm -hmm. can't do any of it without financial support. So I appreciate everybody expressing their excitement. What are the categories that we've nailed oh, down yeah. for the Blue Beard Challenge, Paul? We've got mustache, partial beard, uh, full beard under 12, full beard over 12, freestyle, whiskerina, and then the Blue Beard category. So what is the, the Blue, blue beard, beard category? Blue Beard Paul? is... Um, no specific rules, just adding blue color to your beard or blue things to your beard. You know, it's a little, just a little more creative category. Could it yeah. be a creative category? It could be, yes. So, uh, so a, a woman could make a blue beard? Uh, and yeah, be in that yeah, one? I would think so. Yeah. You agree, Sean? I absolutely agree. And the reason why blue is because blue for the prostate cancer cause, right? Like yeah, so that's the sky color blue color is blue. Yeah. So um, we actually do... Uh, uh, an annual awards that recognizes volunteer leaders and our top fundraisers in the community. We call them the Bold for Blue Awards. So uh, it kind of goes hand in hand with the Bluebeard Challenge. Um, and wouldn't it be awesome if the Bluebeard Challenge raised so much money that Paul earned a Bold for Blue Award in February <laughs> of 2024? What and is that? that come up on the stage to be recognized. Your community. Wow. The Talking Beards community could help make that happen with just a little bit of effort. So uh, what, I think what do we need to do to get there? <laughs> well, yeah. generally yeah. speaking, the top fundraisers that are at those Bold for Blue Awards are raising $10,000 or more, uh. roughly speaking. So it is an ambitious goal, but it is achievable. And I mm -hmm. think from what I'm seeing here on the comment thread, people want to get behind you, Paul. So um, let's let's throw down the gauntlet. I think we could do it. Okay. We need 400 competitors to reach ten thousand dollars. Okay, how, many, how many competitors is that per category? Then broken down by seven or eight categories. Uh, thirty-nine point four three six. I really have no idea. <laughs> Fifty-eight. I thought I was totally buying it. I was like, look at him. Yeah, just yeah. yeah math I'm, math. I'm not mathing. Yeah. <laughs> I hardcore math fast. Yeah, you did. So that's like 50 people per category, you know, yeah. <clears throat> can we do it? Probably, but you well, know, what, we well, just... what has been the biggest online beard competition and was it nationals during COVID? Was that the most, or was it the one most that raised did? or most a participants, most participants, you know, so the Guinness book of world records competition for online beer competition, I think is about 170, 180, something like that. Little known fact, Talking Beards, the competition, the first one we did, had about 208 competitors. So, I mean, I guess it, we didn't qualify for Guinness Book of World Records, but we have the biggest one. If you go back to FHL, it was at 208. Okay. So, nice. Brag awesome. rights. Brag hmm. rights. That's but Guinness Book of World Records, it's like 180, something like well, that. Well, and yeah. with, if I'm not how official are those guys? And really, how much right? did we how much did we raise for that one? That one I think we were at, I think we did. Four thousand and 
nine thousand dollars on the two that we did, or nine on the first and nine and four. I think we raised like thirteen, See? huh? Eight thousand and six thousand were the two that we wow. raised for wow. the first two, and then the one that we did for <clears throat> for Josh a little bit awesome. later. Was, it's so one of the things that I really love about as I'm learning more about the uh, the uh, beard and mustache competition community, it's so evident how everybody wants to give back to their communities and to the causes that are important to them. I just think that kind of what I call a philanthropic value within that community is exemplary. And I mean, like, what better use of your awesome beards and mustaches right. than to use that as a platform for uh, for a great cause and for, for helping folks out. We need more collaboration in this world, in my opinion. And so I, agree. I think that's a partnership that is really wonderful. Absolutely. Well, one, one other way we can raise money, though, is, you know, we, we have the $25 entry fee, but you can donate more than that. So Absolutely. you say that, Paul. Yeah. How yeah. exactly do people donate? for the blue beard contest we've, we've set up a a team link for uh the grow and give and what we're gonna do is i'll post that soon i, was, I need to uh, tweak a couple things on it yes we're but, still um, working on it it's fine yeah so, but there'll be options of you know it, it, when i looked at it earlier there's different options of donations you can give and then there's okay. the other which you would use for your um entry fee but you can donate as much as you want on there and and everything is going directly to zero um, so we've cut out the middle and like none of us are collecting money. It's all going directly to their site. Perfect. And then that's, you know, kind of how we'll check everything. Um, yeah. yeah, well, John, I'll have that link up soon. Probably in the next day. And you can, yeah. you can look up Paul's uh, team page that is not quite ready on our website, zero cancer.org slash grow. Um, and we'll post and, all that once, once yeah. we get it all finalized, we'll be posting all the links to, to the blue beard contest and we'll be talking about it every week and, and we'll pop it up and we'll, we'll definitely remind everybody that it's, that it's a thing. And, and yeah. you know, I'll, I'll talk about it when I'm out and about and th these uh, live competitions over the next couple months. And well, we'll yeah. I mean, we do you guys do have it. like flyers or anything for this event? Because I mean, definitely with all the events that Aaron little flyers out and about all over the country. I mean, to uh, report it too. I haven't made anything. I don't know. Sean, do you have things available? That we, they can well, I, you know, and honestly, I was just thinking that we would be sharing this Facebook uh, event link here that you made, Paul. Is that a, okay. uh, well, I just, tried yeah, I mean, we can share the Facebook link thing, yeah. everybody. And I'll, I'll definitely let it be known that it's a thing. And yeah. Yeah. We'll love that. that. And if, the, if there are folks who are inspired right now that want to give, you can totally visit our website, zerocancer.org, and give there. Um, and then just, you know, if you want to, drop me a line at sean at zerocancer.org and uh, let me know that that gift should go to Paul Kennedy and his fundraiser, and I can uh, and get moved over for you. So yeah, you some folks like to do that in the moment. We can certainly take care of y'all. Um, we every day have more patients being diagnosed. Amanda's diagnosed every uh or lost to disease every 15 minutes, unfortunately, and uh, yes. diagnosed um, every- Close to 35,000 will die this year. Yeah. 35,000. Yeah, people don't realize that yeah. actually um, the, di the diagnoses rates and the morbidity rates for prostate cancer are pretty roughly equivalent to what breast cancer is in our yeah, country. Yeah, almost, almost identical, just within a few numbers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's and, wild and, that, but, you know, prostate cancer and, and breast cancer are, you know, so similar in percentages and, and life loss and stuff like that, but yet, you know, yep. everyone talks about breast cancer awareness, but, you know, yeah. prostate yeah. prostate awareness. Yeah, you, you don't, you don't see a whole lot of it. Yeah. Uh, and, and in just, the bearding... Quick... Oh, sorry, sorry, in... a... Go ahead, go Paul. Ahead. You go. <laughs> Just, you. Uh, you know, just as I was just going to plug a couple of other things that are going on right now that are benefiting yeah, zero. Um, Ron Rice has got his thing going on right yes. now, the shave for prostate. Yep. I think their deadline for that is October 21st, I think, I think roughly around right. there. Yeah, he's taking donations and some guys are going to either shave or do some weird things with their beards or things like that if they hit their goal. So that's one one to keep in mind. And then also I'm uh, doing a run walk event here in Fort Worth in October. So I'm also looking for donations for that. And I've got that link on my page. Cool. Well, and, and his, uh, Andrew Matson says nationals are in uh, Florida on November 4th. Uh, and that's definitely, everyone's going to be there. I mean, there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of people at that event. 
I mean, definitely a great place to really wrangle everyone up and, mm -hmm. and get, get them knowing about this event and, you know, helping, helping this, this online event out. I mean, it'll be, that'd be great. Yeah, that'd be awesome. We do have, you guys were asking about flyers earlier. I have like general flyers about the Grow and Give campaign that I can certainly hook y'all up with um, either electronically or we can get some printed and, and sent off to you. Um, you can email me at Sean, S-H-A-W-N at zerocancer.org. I tried to put it in the comments there, but it for some reason is not letting me post my comments. Um, and so, yeah, you're always welcome to drop me a line um, and, and follow up about this conversation and I'll be happy to, you know, connect the dots. And what uh, was that email address again? Sean, my name, Sean at zerocancer.org. And then Eric Shout brings and us Amy up. And is on the line. Hey, girl. That's uh, my, that is my cohort and teammate, Renee Haney from um, uh, New Jersey area outside of Philly. It's so great to see up, you. What's up, Renee? Renee? What's so up? Eric Schultz says, when making donations, ask your employer about matching donations. Many companies. Right, match yeah, yeah, that's a good, that's a real good point. <laughs> to a certain dollar amount. So there you go. Like That is true. Yeah. If you have yeah. a real job, go, go ask them. <laughs> you know, we'll maybe help you out. Yeah, go go attack the HR person and make them like spread it upon all the employees. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. It could happen. Yeah, you, yeah. you especially like Eric Schott. He he works with big money people. I'm sure those people just love to just give all their money away. So if you got a job like Eric Schott and you just yeah. hang out with big piles of money all day, you help him out. Go send it to the prostate awareness people. <laughs> Great. Well, Sean, I think uh, I think you educated everyone very yeah, well today. We covered a lot of grounds. Yes, we, we did. Agree. And I just want to uh, take a moment, and Aaron, I want to thank you and Scott for uh, for supporting uh, the cause and the organization. Really, like, really appreciate it. Get go, like literally. I think I got connected with Aaron because I went to the beardcalendar dot com. And I was just trying to like educate myself about the beard and mustache community. And I, I dropped you a line and you were responded right away. And I, and a friendship was formed right off the bat. Yeah. I find your, I love following you on social. You're fun and entertaining. And, and I, I live vicariously through you with all of your travel <laughs> and your donuts and your <laughs> little Debbie parking. And like all of the I'm out and about. <laughs> you are definitely highly entertaining, but well, also you. I've gotten to know that you have a really generous heart and uh, want to give back to the community and to the causes, which I fully align with. I think that is, you're just the type of person I want to be hanging out with. Scott, I've just gotten to know you tonight, but I hope that we have now formed a friendship and a bond that will last a long, long time. And uh, Paul, he, I already told him when I saw him just a few weeks ago in Fort Worth that um, uh, once, once I'm buddies with somebody, I don't let them go. So uh, he's, he's stuck with me and I want to thank him for being an awesome volunteer leader and uh, Zero Prostate Cancer Champion for this cause and sharing his story. Um, I think it's by sharing your stories as patients that we are turning the tides and making talking about prostate cancer as um, socially acceptable as talking about breast cancer. And go. frankly, that's something that cool. needs to be done to bring the cause up out of the dark into the light. And, and empower men to talk to their doctors and get those screenings done. Well, one of my favorite quotes, and I, and I have no idea who actually said it was, if you can't be a good example, you're best to serve as a horrible warning. So I've taken that to heart. <laughs> All right, Great. This has been absolutely delightful to, to be with y'all. And thank you, thank you, thank you for everything that you do for thank the, you, the cause. And um, I'm excited to see what happens with this Bluebeard Challenge. We're, we're gonna get ourselves all organized we're going to keep you guys in touch with us. Yeah. And thank you in advance on behalf be, of all of the patients and families that we serve here at yeah. Zero. Uh, be patient with us. We're still working through some of the bugs on the competition, but we'll have it all, all together real quick. Yeah. I mean, the event page is kind of put us together in the last few days. So, so. <laughs> yeah. We'll get it. We'll get it all straight. And then you, everybody will have a, a few weeks to get their entries in and, and yeah. all that good stuff. But, but yeah, Sean, just real quick, too. I mean, it, you now are part of the, the talking beards family. So yeah. this is a place for you. If you have anything going on, please reach out to us. We are a vessel for you to get the word out. 
Um, I mean, this, we, like I said earlier, we're always looking for great, genuine, like caring people to work with and to team up with. And this has been a really fun and educational thing. I mean, Paul, thank you also for being here and sharing yeah, your man, story. Thank you, I mean, Paul, for your, yeah, exactly. Your story. I mean, you right connected now. with so many people here tonight. I mean, just because you're a lovable character in the whole bearding community and it's like everyone knows who you are or they've seen pictures of you so they can relate. And having you here tonight with Sean really was of the perfect match to really get well, a lot of good information out. And, you know, I, like I said, I'm going to go get checked as soon as I go to the doctor my next time. As soon yeah. as I go see Scott, I will, I will check him. And no, I'll, just, no. I'll, <laughs> I'll YouTube it and I'll figure out exactly what I need to fill around for. We got it. No problem. Scott. I got you. Uh, false. Come on, man. Oh, all right. Well, you can go to the doctor or whatever. If you want to be all professional, that's yeah. <laughs> Sean. Paul, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. We'll be in touch and we'll we'll spread the word about the Blue Beard Challenge and all all that good stuff and uh, yeah, everything you're doing. We appreciate y'all. All right, awesome. Thank you. Have thank, a good you. Night. And thank you for letting us yeah. t- letting us do this. Absolutely, anytime, and y'all have a great night. All right. Bye bye.